If you've got a blog, one of the best ways that you can find clients is by having them find you. But the question is, how do you actually grow your blog to the point in which people will reach out to you and hunt you out as a freelancer or consultant? Let's go ahead and solve that right now. When you start your blog, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you're putting out content that resonates with all kinds of people in your given industry. So if you're a developer, one of the things you'll wanna talk about is development related topics. Now, that also means if you're a designer, you should be talking about design related topics. The same thing goes for copywriting. You're gonna to wanna to stick to the area in which you're gonna be doing your consulting or freelancing in. But very often what comes up is someone will say, well, I know I need to blog and I want to blog, but I don't know what I should be writing about. Now here's three tips that you can use to help build your following on your blog, which in turn is gonna build your network and have people reaching out to you for future possibilities of freelancing and consulting, which is exactly how I built my career in freelancing and in consulting was just by getting out there and my blog was a humongous proponent of it. Now, one disclaimer before we get going, this is recorded in 2021 and a lot of people might say, blogging is just something that's not valid anymore. The same thing was said to me in the early 2000s when I started. Blogging was done. I was right around 2005 or 2006 when I started. That's wrong. Blogging is here to stay. So just know that you're not too late. In fact, people are always going to continually read. Search engines are always going to continually index your content and it's going to show up in various different search engines as results. So let's hop into it. Number one, if you're a developer, I recommend that you create how-to content and tutorials on your website. This is gonna be on your blog. So what you might wanna do is you might be building a mobile application, maybe a website, or maybe you're learning how to use a particular library and you build a sample application. Blog about this, walk someone through the process of here's what we're going to build and show the end product first, perhaps a simple little widget that does something fancy. And we're gonna build that in this tutorial, let's get started. And then you walk them through step-by-step -step on how to build it. You'll include screenshots of any perhaps graphics or any visuals and then you'll also include all of the code directly inside of your blog post. Now you can embed this with some type of plugin and some type of syntax highlighter for whatever platform you're using. WordPress has a bunch, there's a bunch of other ones out there or you could simply embed them as GitHub gists inside of your actual blog post. What this does will allow the user who's reading this to copy and paste the code into their editor so they can actually run the same code that you're running. What you're doing here is you are then acting as a teacher and an educator to whoever's following following along. Now they might learn something from you about how to use a particular component or how to build a particular type of screen or error messages or design pattern. Whatever it is, they're learning from you and they see you as the expert. Now this is especially true if your content and your tutorial is very well written. What will end up happening is people will start linking to it. You'll find if you look at your analytics that links are coming from Stack Overflow, they're coming from other blog posts, they're coming from Reddit, they're coming from Facebook and Twitter and all different places all over the web because your content is very valuable and people are relying on a lot to do whatever you're teaching to do. So I highly recommend that you focus initially on how-to content. You may have already seen something out there such as how to build this screen with this one component. Maybe there's something that you can do a little bit different. Maybe here's how to build the screen with these animations. Here's how to build the screen with error handling. And there's all different types of things that you can do because eventually someone is gonna be searching for that type of exact thing. I recently was searching online how to perform some type of animation inside of React.js given a very particular scenario. And thankfully I found a couple of blog posts on it and I relied on them to help me fix the solution at hand. I appreciate those blog posts a ton. And what this will end up doing is just opening up more doors of opportunity for you. So this is gonna be a big one simply because a lot of the content you create is going to be shared and put out on the web in various different formats on various different sites and gonna be spread around for long periods of time. So definitely focus on how to content and tutorial first. Number two, the next one that you're going to want to focus on are going to be search terms and long tail terms. This is going to be something like bug fixes. As a developer and someone in software, I can't tell you the number of times that I have Googled something and I couldn't find what I was looking for. I put the error message into Google, no results were found. At that point, it's, you're in a very dire situation as a developer because no one else has talked about this online that at least Google knows of, and that's usually the best engine, especially for search engines for developers. At that point, you're left to figure it out for yourself. And if you've ever done that before, you've known that you've banged your head against the wall for a while trying to just figure out what is the problem? Why is this not working? And let's say finally you get it to work and you maybe realize it was, it was very simple. It was something that was actually completely unrelated that was 
was causing this issue over here for some odd reason, but you were able to figure it out. It's those type of things that are gonna give you a lot of long tail traffic and it's gonna put you at the number one search result for that term. So what is long tail traffic? If you look at a, the graph, if you start up on the left part of the X axis, it's gonna start high and these are gonna be terms that are gonna be something that's very popular like, for example, the Android life cycle. What is the Android life cycle? Just Google that, you're going to get a plethora of results. At the other end of the spectrum, as the curve starts going down towards the bottom, approaching the X axis, almost touching it, being parallel to it, these are gonna be search terms that are not very popular and there's not many search results for. And this is gonna be the long tail traffic. This is gonna be that weird, obscure error message that says, you know, R32, 16X, can't find, undefined variable of array, whatever, something really weird that you encountered. That's what someone's gonna search for. What you can do for number two is, once you figure these things out and there's no blog posts out there or there are limited blog posts out there, it doesn't have to be a ton or it doesn't have to be zero, but let's say there's not any good results out there or you can add to it and make it better, take that bug fix you did and write a blog post about it and put that actual error message into the blog post as text. So it might have that R1632 can't find defined unresolved variable of an array, whatever it is. You're gonna put that inside of the actual blog post itself. So here's an error I encountered when I was building this component and it gave me this really weird error and here are the steps that I performed to solve it and here's my understanding of how it was fixed and why it was caused. Hopefully it helps somebody else. What will happen is Google is gonna index that and then the next time someone Googles that error, which if you're Googling it, that means someone else is going to eventually Google it. You're going to come up as one of the top results if there's no results out there. If there's no results, you're gonna be the number one result. If there's only a couple of them, you're gonna be above the fold. Above the fold is uh, anything you're scrolling on a mobile phone or on a desktop, it's before you have to scroll. You're gonna be right there at the top. And that's an organic search term. You're gonna get a ton of traffic from that. And if you have comments enabled on your blog, a lot of people are going to thank you for it and be very appreciative of you for helping solve that weird issue that they couldn't solve themselves. So these are gonna be ones that help insanely. Very early on in my my Android career, I created a blog post called Android Error Validation, and that was the topic. All it was was a simple little blog post that talked about Android's set error method on the text input that we had in Android. And when you would call that with some string value, it would then pop up like a little bubble above or below the actual text input saying, hey, here's the error that we have. Because of the search term Android text validation, there was nothing out there at the time. That result stuck at the top of Google for years, and I got a bunch of blog traffic from that. Now I still get that traffic now, even with a recent blog post that I did about LVH.me, which is kind of a local host loopback. And I was having an issue with that and come to find out I had some weird settings in my router and my ISP had these weird things going on. And once I made a few changes, everything started to work. I get traffic from that all the time. Now I don't get many comments on it because I have I don't have the comments enabled on my blog at this time, but I still do get traffic from my analytics coming to my blog. And so people are reading it. So it's very useful. Now, if you want to see if people are finding it useful, enable the comments. Just know that you're probably gonna have to moderate them. There's gonna be some spam that comes through. There's a lot of bots out there, so just be aware of that. Focus on those long tail keywords. If it's some error that you found, blog about it and make sure you include the error text or the error message you got inside of the blog post so Google can index that and people will find it real easily. All right, so let's talk about number three and that's gonna be consistency. You're gonna wanna be consistent here. When you start blogging, you wanna get your name out there, you wanna be known for certain things. You wanna blog as often as you can. Now, if you've ever done any blogging, you know that blogging is a lot of work, especially if you're building tutorials and how-to content. It's gonna be very difficult to get out one solid blog post a week unless you have a lot of free time. And if you don't have any prior existing obligations, no family, that's a lot easier than if someone who has a family and a bunch of other obligations. If you can, get out one how-to tutorial blog post a week. What I would recommend if you can, sparse some other stuff inside of there as well. So maybe you get out one blog post that's a how-to tutorial. And then a few days later, you put out one that's where you ran across a bug. And that's typically what I did. I would put out one post a week and I did this for years. And then anytime I ran across a random error message or a weird bug I fixed, I would just blog about that as well. And this slowly started the snowball. If you're even finding that difficult doing one a week, well then try going one every other week and then at least put something in the middle so you're still putting out content every single week. This is gonna be very helpful to kind of keep your content fresh on your site. And Google's gonna see that and say, hey, there's a lot of 
value in this content. It's continually being updated and Google will continually rank your site higher and higher and higher for various different terms. Now, of course, the algorithm changes. And so what I say right now might change in 10 minutes. That's usually the case with Google. If your content is valuable and people are linking to it and there's a lot of traffic to it, Google will continually rank you for the terms that match those actual pages. All right, that's what about wraps it up. Those are the three. The three are going to be building a tutorial or how to. And that's going to be your number one thing you want to do consistently. Those will be very valuable. Number two, long tail search keywords, maybe bug fixes, something like that. Be sure to include the error message in the actual blog post. And number three, you have to be consistent. Make sure you have, are releasing on a consistent schedule. Find time to write, find time to get it done. Here's one actual little bonus that I want to throw in here. When you're building your blog, one of the things that you should do immediately, I think every person who's built a blog has regretted not doing, is immediately creating a email signup notification on their site. At the bottom of your blog post, usually on WordPress, you can add an after entry widget. And inside of there, you can say, add a widget to add them to a, an email newsletter. You can use various different ones, such as ConvertKit, MailChimp, uh, the, you know, there's a, a ton of them that are out there. Just find something where you can store your emails and add people to an email list. As you start releasing new how-to tutorials, send out an email about those tutorials. Now, I don't send emails out about any of the bug fixes. I treat those as a way for Google to index my site and keep driving people to my site. People usually find interesting content when it's how-to tutorials. Whenever I would write one of those, I'd release it and let it go for a couple of days. And then a couple of days later, I would send out an email to my newsletter list saying, hey, here's a brand new tutorial where I teach you how to use Jetpack Compose, right? Teach you how to use a new React component or whatever. So those things are very useful and will drive more people to your actual site. And the reason why you want to start this at the beginning is because as your site continues to grow, you're going to get one subscriber, then two, then five, then 10, then a hundred, then a thousand. And eventually you're just going to continually grow. And if you don't start this until you actually already have a blog following, you're going to be bummed out that you missed out on all that because people will subscribe. Yes, people will unsubscribe as well. Even if you only have one person on your email list, be sure to send out that email to them because that's one person that's interested in learning from you. Take that and hopefully they'll forward it to somebody else. And that's just another way for you to grow. So I hope that helps. Start blogging, put your content out there and good luck.